Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion Node Breakdown. Today's node is the Cube Map node. So we're going to jump into Fusion and we've got a little setup with a cube. And if you remember, we did go over the Cube 3D node at one point. And if you remember right on the Cube 3D node, if I uh, rotate this, we had multiple inputs so we can input different uh, images to each side of the cube. But on this node, we are limited to a cube to be able to do that. If we wanted to use a cube or any other shape, we can still accomplish the same thing using the cube map node. So let's go ahead and delete this and bring our shape back in. And I'm going to find a cube map node and add that in. And before we input this in, we uh, need a material node to input in to uh, our little shape here. So we're going to just bring in a blend and input that into our shape. We're going to take our cube map and input it into our diffuse color material. And we're getting an error on everything because we don't have any material going in. And how this works is it works just like the cube 3D node. We have different layouts. So the node requires a vertical cross layout or a horizontal cross layout or separate images. Now I talked about these vertical and horizontal crosses, but I didn't really show you. So what those types of images are is they look like this. So this is a horizontal cross. And if it was a vertical cross, it would be up and down like a regular cross. So this is the type of image that this is looking for. So if I switch this to horizontal cross and input our image and input our image and we go to our render, you can see we've got that uh, on our cube. And within our cube map node down here for our conversion, we have positive Z or negative Z to uh, tell it which way to face. Additionally, we have the coordinate system, which is model world or I. Now where this takes place is if I go to my shape and I transform it, you can see that's really not moving with our shape. It's just moving according to uh, how we're looking at it within the world. So if I go to our cube map, and I change this to I. You can see it's doing the same thing because it's our eye view. But if I go to cube map and change it to model. Now I can go ahead and rotate our model in that uh, texture will stick to the actual model. So that's what this coordinate system is telling it to do, whether it's stuck to the model, the world or your eye view. And then your texture source right here or your texture depth is whether it's going off the source or you can change it to your different texture depths. Your rotation just allows you to rotate the image on the X, the Y, and the Z if you need to make any changes. Additionally, you can change the ordering. And then under your texture filtering mode, it's the same as all other 3D nodes. And it gives you the option for your uh, OpenGL low and high Q, how that's going to be uh, filtering those textures, as well as your software, whether it's nearest or bilinear for your low and your high Q. And then this button right down here will warn about bad dimensions, meaning if you put something in here and the dimensions are completely off, it's gonna give you a warning. Additionally, we can change our material ID. So within the horizontal cross, I'm going to go ahead and bring this up so you can see how this is mapped out to our little cube here. So for this image, this is how it's mapped out in Fusion. Now, some programs are different. The uh, tops will be flipped or the left and the right will be flipped. So every 3D program is a little bit different, but this is how Fusion maps it out. So looking at our image, the left will be minus X, the front will be plus Z, the right will be plus X, and the back minus Z, the top plus Y, the bottom minus Y. 
And what this means is when we assign images individually, these are the coordinates we're going to be using to assign those images. So we can come to our Q map and we can say separate images. And we don't have any images yet, so we need to add some images. And let's go ahead and add an image. So if I say bring this footage in and I want this on my front, I can select my front plus Z. Here's my plus Z. So if I go to our little render node, there it is. It's on the front of our cube. And if I rotate this, you can see it's on the front of our cube. Now, if you notice, our uh, footage is all squished. And there is a way to fix this. You can either one, just square up your footage so it's a perfect square if you want it in here correctly. Or we can do this with Infusion if we want. It's just going to take multiple nodes. So what we could do is we can take a background and this is just a simple, easy way. There's many ways to do this, but this is just a simple way. We can go to our background, go to our image, uncheck auto resolution and make this 2160 by 2160. So it's a perfect square. Then we can bring in a merge node, bring this into our background and uh, bring our media into the foreground. So now we've got our media and clearly that's a 1920 by 1080. So we can just take a transform node and uh, we can bring up our size. So it's uh, covering our entire square. And now if I bring this media into our uh, plus Z, and let's look at our render. Now you can see that squared off and our uh, aspect ratio is correct. And within our little square, our media is uh, animated. So we can do this on all sides. So let's go ahead and grab another one. We're just going to copy these nodes right here. Paste them and uh, input our media into this one. And let's make this media our top and our bottom. So if we look here, our top is plus Y and minus Y. So we can go to our little render node here. Bring this into plus Y and minus y and let's go ahead and bring this original footage to our back as well and if we remember right our back is minus z because we've already assigned it to the plus z so we can go here select this one and make this minus z so now if we look at our uh, little box there we've got our footage on the front in the back and in the top and the bottom and it is all uh, plain so let's go ahead and bring in a third one to fill in our sides so we can copy uh, these let's get rid of this Let's bring in another footage and let's input that into R. And if you notice, as we go over, it's letting us know these are full already with the little uh, dots next to it. So let's bring us into our left and our right, which is our plus X and our minus X. So now if we look at our little cube, We've got images everywhere. And if you notice, this is a little off. So if you need to fix your footage, all we have to do is go to our transform and uh, we can change the location of our footage. If 
we need to make it a little larger we can make it larger to fill it in there we go so now if we look at our render let's uh, change this so we can see kind of all of our sides playing we've got all of our different footage playing back slowly so there we go now just keep in mind like I said the good thing about this is we can also go to our blend node and we can still change up any coloring we have to change and we can change our uh, specular intensity bring it up or down if we want giving us full control of that material now, additionally, the one benefit of not using that cube 3D node, which does the same thing as this, is we can change our shapes. So if we go control, we can actually change this to a plane, which is going to give us a crazy uh, look. We can change it to a sphere. So now we can play all of our footage on a sphere. And again, we can uh, rotate it however we want so we can play back our footage we can use a cylinder and if we're using the cylinder we can change this radius and the height to uh, fit our footage how we want to fit it and we can even animate it if we wanted to uh, say uh, make it spin 60. So now if we play it back, we've got all of our footage uh, spinning and playing back. And if you want to rotate this even more, we could use a, uh, you're not going to be able to use this rotation because it's going to make it do odd things. As we uh, play it back, you see our whole thing is spinning. So if you wanted to change that, we could add a transform 3D node. Bring that in after our shape. And then we can translate that this way. So now we can play the whole thing like that and see both sides of our uh, footage. And we can use a cone. We can use a torus. And we can use an ico. So that is the cube map node. I will see you in the next node breakdown.